Hello there, very good evening and welcome to the news tonight here on Rajya Sabha TV. I'm Tracy Shilshi and in the next 30 minutes I'll be getting you the day's top stories from India and across the world. Let's start with the headlines. After the trust vote in the Uttarakhand Assembly, Supreme Court will declare the verdict tomorrow but Congress MLAs claim victory. JDU leader son Rocky Yadav is finally arrested for allegedly shooting dead a 20-year-old who overtook his vehicle. Bihar police also recover the murder weapon. Cutting across party lines, members express concern over paid news in Rajya Sabha. Government underscores the need for a structured debate to combat the menace. And in the Philippines, anti-crime contestant Rodrigo Duterte wins the election by a clear margin, promises to continue his tough starts as president. Starting with our top story, the Supreme Court monitored vote of confidence in the Uttarakhand Assembly concluded today. The result was sealed in an envelope and will be announced by the court tomorrow morning. The voting took place for 62 seats only as nine disqualified MLAs were not allowed to take part in the voting. Here are more details. The Supreme Court directed trust vote in the Uttarakhand Assembly took place as scheduled on Tuesday. The result that will be declared by the court on Wednesday will end the nearly two-month-long political impasse in the Hill State. With the nine disqualified MLAs kept away, the Congress claimed to have clinched the numbers. Party leaders said 33 MLAs voted for Rawat, while BGP MLAs conceded their side got only 28. The House has an effective strength of 61. मतदान हुआ और सब सदस्यों ने जिन्होंने भाग लिया मैं सबको धन्यवाद देता हूं सबसे बढ़ करके मैं सुप्रीम कोर्ट को बहुत धन्यवाद देता हूं और मुझे पूरी उम्मीद है कि कल अनिश्चय के बादल छट जाएंगे स्थितियां स्पष्ट हो जाएंगी द वोटिंग स्टार्टेड इन अ ड्रामेटिक फैशन विद द रेबल बीजेपी लेजिस्लेटर भीमलाल आर्य स्विचिंग ओवर टू द कांग्रेस साइड एट द सेम टाइम कांग्रेस एमएलए रेखा आर्य सीम टू हैव क्रॉस्ड ओवर टू द बीजेपी Minutes before the floor test, however, BSP chief Mayawati announced her support to the Congress. The BSP has two seats in Uttarakhand. It's also a part of the six-member Progressive Democratic Front that pledged support for Rawat. Our party, which is important to protect the country, is important to protect the country in the country. We all know our stand in a good way. So our party is in the country. कांग्रेस पार्टी के समर्थन में ही वोट देगी। The tone of the BJP leaders also indicated that the Congress would have gathered the numbers to win. I do believe that if the nine rebel MLAs were allowed to vote, the numbers would have been totally different and the outcome would have been different. We have always accepted the verdict of the Supreme Court in the past and tomorrow as well. I do, however, believe that this sting operation shows you Harish Rawat and the Congress party's low political strategy. And the public of this country knows who the victorious are and who the defeated are. The result that has been delivered sealed in an envelope will be presented to the Supreme Court on Wednesday morning, after which it will be announced. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. And ahead of that result, here are more reactions from political parties. The democracy has won. Uh, there were... Uh, you know, number of people tried to suppress the democracy, but uh, I would like to congratulate the Supreme Court that uh, it is because of Supreme Court that it was made possible uh, that we can have a floor test in Uttarakhand Assembly. We have not hazarded anything. They, they could not get the appropriation bill passed. And now, after that, what all they have done, they have been thoroughly exposed. You have seen two, two videos coming out. How money was offered, how all unscrupulous and uh, immoral things have been done. Everything is there in public domain and we have not formed any government. I don't talk about any party, I talk about the people's rights. If we believe in the people's rights, then the people's rights, the people's rights, the people's rights, the floor test is very important. If it is done first, the people who have been done, the people who have been done, the people who have been done, the people who have been done.
Meanwhile, Finance Minister Arun Jaitley today moved the Uttarakhand Appropriation Bill in Rajya Sabha to allow the state to carry out expenditure from April onwards. Congress protested the bill, calling it an insult to the Uttarakhand Assembly. However, the chair ruled that the bill has to be taken tomorrow. Coinciding with the Supreme Court monitored protest in Uttarakhand Assembly, Finance Minister Arun Jaitley on Tuesday moved Uttarakhand Appropriation Bill in Rajya Sabha so that the state administration can carry out expenditure till the political crisis is resolved in the state. Thereafter, Introducing the appropriation bill, Jaitley said the bill has to be passed irrespective of what happens in the floor test. Irrespective of what happens in the vote of confidence today or what has happened in the vote of confidence today, that ordinance of appropriation has to be approved. And therefore, it has to be approved because the expenditure from 1st April onwards for a limited period has to be sanctioned. Otherwise, every expenditure incurred from 1st of April will become unconstitutional. The Congress, however, called the bill as gross constitutional impropriety and said it was an insult to the Uttarakhand Assembly. Today, the legislators have voted. The verdict is very clear. Now, let leave it to the Uttarakhand Assembly. Stop insulting them now. Why this is coming again? It is gross constitutional impropriety. We still maintain that Uttarakhand Assembly had passed the budget. If there is any anomaly, let the speaker there and then let members of that legislature deal with it. This is not our responsibility. As the Treasury bench pushed for the bill to be passed, the Congress protest intensified, forcing a disruption. Deputy Chairman P.J. Kurian then told the House that the bill had to be taken up tomorrow, even if the opposition was not up for it. With regard to the Uttarakhand, whatever may be the view of the uh, De Deputy Leader of the Congress, I have given a ruling. The ruling is that, I have given the clear ruling that from 1st April onwards until this date or the next date, whatever it may be, uh, the expenditure incurred from the Consolidate Fund of India by the state government of the Uttarakhand has to be approved here. Later, the House took up the discussion on the Appropriation Bill 2016 and the Finance Bill 2016. As the protests continued, Professor Kurian adjourned the House once again till 4 p.m. After this, the House reassembled. Adjourning the House for the day, Deputy Chairman Professor Kurian announced that all the bills will be discussed on Wednesday. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. But cutting across party lines, members today expressed concern over paid news in the Upper House. Claiming that paid news will weaken the democratic fabric of the nation, the government underscored the need for a structured debate on com to combat the perils. Here's a report. Vijay Goel of the BJP raised the issue of paid news during zero hour in the Rajya Sabha. Stating that it affected the credibility of media houses, Goel alleged that media outlets were being paid to carry information without any authentic disclosure. आते थे इलेक्शनों के बीच के अंदर जिसमें यह नहीं पता चलता था कि भाई खबर है कि खबरों में समाचार है या यह सरकारों के विज्ञापन है पर अब मुझे बड़ा देख के ताजुब हो रहा है कि पिछले दिनों के अंदर सारे नामी ग्रामीण अखबारों के अंदर जिस तरीके से न्यूज़ के पन्ने आते हैं कोई इसको एडिटोरियल कहता है कोई इसको कंज्यूमर कनेक्ट कहता है कोई कुछ कहता है उससे पाठक को यही नहीं पता चलता the Congress, the JDO, the SP and the CPIM urge the government to make paid news not just a punishable offence but also liable to serious penalties. ये सही है कि मीडिया की एक अहम भूमिका है देश के प्रजातंत्र के अंदर लोगों को समाचार देने में लोगों को जानकारी देने में पर अगर वो पैसे के आधार पर होगी इससे लोग गुमराह होंगे प्रभावित होंगे और ये अपने आप में एक अनहेल्दी प्रैक्टिस है। अभी प्रिंट मीडिया का सवाल नहीं है, इलेक्ट्रॉनिक मीडिया भी चाहे जिसका सर्वे निकाल के जिसको जिता दे, जिसको हरा दे। एक जब अगर एक लोगों का मीडिया पे इतना विश्वास है, उसके बाद अगर मीडिया इस तरह पेड होकर एलो जर्नलिस्ट कर रहा है, तो मैं नेता we are not allowing people to choose freely what they want to do. It has become a big, a, a, it's become a big racket, a, a business, and unless you have some regulation about this, it, we, our democracy cannot work. 
Terming paid news as an aberration, Information and Broadcasting Minister Arun Jaitley called for a structured debate on the issue. Advertising is the right of everyone. But when governments start excessively advertising, where is the dividing line between excessive advertisement and bribery? This can also happen. And therefore, this is an important subject to which we must find a solution. Yeah. Even the chair admitted the seriousness of the issue, while members across the political spectrum agreed to hold discussion on the ways to curb paid news. This is Kriti Mishra's report for Rajya Sabha TV. On to news now on the Augusta Westland Choppers deal case. A team of enforcement directorate officials are likely to travel to a few countries soon to seek expediting the process of replies to with judicial requests issued in the case. The agency has already issued follow-up requests on its letters or gateries to at least 10 countries in connection with the money laundering case it has registered to probe the Augusta Westland deal. The countries include Tunisia, England, the it, it, Italy, the United Kingdom, Switzerland, the United Arab Emirates, Mauritius, Israel, Finland, Singapore and Denmark. Meanwhile, the CBI also summoned advocate Gautam Khetan, IDS Infotech Managing Director Pratap Agarwal and Aeromatrix CEO Praveen Bakshi in the scam. Now, in the latest development in the Gaya Road Rage case, JDU MLC Manorama Devi has been suspended by the party high command and her son, Rocky Yadav, who was arrested earlier today, has been sent to 14 days judicial custody for the murder of 20-year-old Aditya Sachdev. Here's a report. Rocky Yadav, son of ruling Janta Dal United legislator Manor Devi, arrested three days after he allegedly shot dead a teenage boy for overtaking his luxury SUV in Gaya district. Rocky was picked up in Bodh Gaya in the wee hours of Tuesday from a house that belongs to his father, Bindi Yadav. Since the incident happened, we have been conducting a lot of investigation, we have been conducting raids and in the sequence of those raids, uh, the main named FIR accused was ar arrested today early morning. We are um, completely bound to ensuring that uh, people who are accused in the case, people who are found guilty in the case, they are not able to intimidate the family members of the victim in any way and we would ensure that as a district. Notwithstanding police's claim that he had confessed to the crime, Rocky pleaded innocence before the media. Rocky Yadav is accused to have shot dead class 12 student Aditya Sachdev, allegedly for overtaking his SUV near police lines in Gaya district on Saturday night. Rocky's father, Bindi Yadav, and Rajesh Kumar, the bodyguard of his MLC mother, were sent to 14-day judicial custody for abetting his escape. Shortly after the incident, the opposition BJP turned up the heat, claiming that the Jungle Raj had returned to the state under the rule of Chief Minister Nitish Kumar. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. In more national news, Congress Vice President Rahul Gandhi cancelled his two-day visit to the poll-bound southern states of uh, Puducherry, Tamil Nadu and Kerala, citing health reasons. This comes a day after top Congress leaders met Home Minister Rajnath Singh, seeking adequate security to the party vice president after an unsigned letter threatened to attack him when he would be received by Puducherry Congress unit leaders. Rahul Gandhi was scheduled to address a rally of the Congress DMK Alliance at Karaikal in Puducherry today. And now to our continuing focus on the drought crisis in the country. After an extensive tour of the Maratwada region in Maharashtra, Rajya Sabha TV is now in Banda district in Bundelkhand region of Uttar Pradesh. And here's a ground report by Arvind Kumar Singh. On the Banda Chitrakoot border stands the Rasin Dam. Built at a cost of 77 crore rupees, it waters lands that are owned by 850 farmers in these surrounding areas. Many of them got an indifferent compensation for giving up land to build it. The water was to have made their fields lush with crops, but instead of irrigation, it ended up promoting pisciculture. These days, the 5,000 residents of Rasan village are going through an extraordinary period of farm distress. 
और यहाँ पर भूखमरी की कगार पर ज़्यादातर किसान हैं जो जिन खेतों में हम लोगों को 150 मन गल्ला मिलता था आज वहाँ दो चार मन नहीं निकला है बांदा डिस्ट्रिक्ट हैज पॉपुलेशन ऑफ 15 लाख पीपल हु आर ऑल फेसिंग अ ड्राउट एंड वाटर क्राइसिस अंडर द फूड सेफ्टी एक्ट द गवर्नमेंट हैज स्टार्टेड डिस्ट्रीब्यूटिंग फूड ग्रेन्स बट द राइजिंग नंबर ऑफ फार्मर्स हु आर ऑन द वर्ज ऑफ स्टारवेशन आर पोजिंग अ चैलेंज टू द गवर्नमेंट मशीनरी नारायणी एंड जसपुरा पिलानी एरियाज आर द वर्स्ट अफेक्टेड आर्बिट्रेरी डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन एंड आउट्राइट लूट इज अफेक्टिंग द ड्राउट रिलीफ मेजर्स सूखा राहत की ये स्थितियाँ हैं कि हमारे यहाँ से राहत पैकेट जो आया है बांदा में समाजवादी राहत पैकेट है और 1290 रुपए का राहत पैकेट है लेकिन वो 1900 रुपए में बेचा जा रहा है उस किसान के दरवाजे तक और या तय शुदा मानकों के आधार पर जो उनकी उनके हिसाब से खड़े उतर रहे हैं टैंकर और समाज राहत पैकेट उन्ही गाँव में भेजे जा रहे हैं जहाँ जहाँ से सभा के प्रत्याशी डिक्लेयर हो गए हैं इन द बुंदेलखंड रीजन बांदा डिस्ट्रिक्ट Evidently the tipping point has been farm distress only the revenue department doesn't think so the drought has further left farmers with no resources to employ any farm labor the quantum of relief that they get from the government is too little to make a difference lagbhag lagbhag agar hamare yahan 100 bighe zameen hai to 100 bighe mein se zyada se zyada 40 bighe mein gehoon hua baki wo aise parti pada hua hai matlab 20% gehoon paida hua 80% sukha aa raha हाँ कुछ एरिया ऐसा है कि वहाँ तो हुआ ही नहीं है एट फोर्टी सेवन डिग्री सेंटीग्रेड द मर्क्यूरी इज राइजिंग इन बांदा डिस्ट्रिक्ट सो डिड द पोलिटिकल क्लाइमेट आफ्टर द रीस डेथ ऑफ अ दालिट ड्यू टू वॉटर स्केसिटी विन द स्टेट गवर्नमेंट ट्राई टू हश ऑफ द मैटर अ न्यूज रिपोर्ट ऑफ अ सिमिलर इंस्टेंस केम फ्रॉम ललितपुर क्लियरली इम्प्रूविंग रिलीफ मेजर्स इज द नीड ऑफ द आर अरविंद कुमार सिंह रिपोर्ट फॉर राज्यसभा टीवी And at least a dozen farmers were injured in a clash with police personnel in the drought-hit district of Banda today. Farmers from Bundelkhand region gathered in the district to carry out a peaceful protest against the district administration when clashes erupted after police baton charged them. But the authorities assured that the reasonable demands of the farmers would be met. Bundelkhand has been divided, and there is a lot of corruption. The young people of Bundelkhand are poor, 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 मजदूर किसान व्यापारी एक तरह से देखा जाए तो समूचा बुंदेलखंड मरने के कगार पर है भूखों लोग मर रहे हैं कर्ज से मर मर रहे हैं लेकिन सरकारें उसको नकार रही हैं। इनकी बीस मांगे थी तो हमने इनको आश्वस्त किया है कि जिला प्रशासन के माध्यम से जो भी मांगे इनकी पूरी होने लायक है उनको हम लोग प्रयास करेंगे Now in the latest edition of the Panama Leaks nearly 2000 individuals entities and addresses with links to India surfaced on Monday giving information on offshore holding of companies in tax havens after a huge database of documents relating to more than 2 lakh offshore accounts were posted online a random check of the database for India displays about 22 offshore entities 1046 officers or individual links 42 intermediaries and as many as 828 addresses within the country the database has around 30000 documents listed with india links names and addresses put up on the website of the body not only show the identities of some individuals and addresses along with description of the companies held but also specifies the date of incorporation of the firms in some cases With that, let's take you through some more updates from across the country in nationwide. Hailstorm and rain played spoil sport at the second Shahi Snan, even as three people were injured on Monday after a tree fell on them. A large number of devotees were seen scurrying for cover as the weather turned hostile. Around 30 lakh people, though, were able to take a holy dip in the Shripra River. The Supreme Court on Tuesday directed the Maharashtra government to give license to eight dance bars within two days, pointing out that while it was incumbent upon the state to curb obscenity, the court said that it would not target a profession while doing so. The National Green Tribunal on Tuesday relaxed norms for tourist hotspots in Rohtang Pass and Manali. It permitted paragliding and snow scooters to a limited number. While it increased the number of petrol vehicles to Rohtang every day, it refused to raise the number of diesel vehicles. 
Meanwhile, the Apex Court allowed existing All India Tourist Permit diesel taxis to operate in the national capital till the expiry of their permit, which is issued for a period of five years. The court also said that there will be no new registration of diesel-run taxis in the national capital. The Delhi University today clarified that Prime Minister Narendra Modi's BA degree was genuine. Registrar Tarun Das said that Prime Minister Modi cleared the exam in 1978 and was awarded the degree in 1979. With that, a quick break here, but we'll be back with the international news in a bit. Stay with us. Tales that inspire. Stories of social change. A salute to diversity. Promoting public discourse. Events that motivate. Inspiring the innovative spirit. Watch Rajya Sabha television documentaries on Rajya Sabha Television. Welcome back. Let's get to international news now. And in Germany, one person was killed and three others injured in a knife attack at a railway station near Munich today. The assailant attacked four commuters during Russia at the graphing station in East Munich. One of the victims died in the hospital. The 27-year-old suspect was eventually overpowered by police. According to witnesses, the man had shouted Allahu Akbar, but the motive for the attack is unclear. The suspect was identified as a German national, apparently from the Hessen area of central Germany. Meanwhile, Bavarian International Interior Minister Joachim Hermann said that there are no indications of an Islamistic motive behind the attack, but drug use may have been a factor. Das Motiv dieser Tat äh, ist nicht abschließend geklärt. Die zuständige äh, bayerische Staatsanwaltschaft wird dazu heute noch eine Presseerklärung äh, abgeben. In jedem Fall für die Opfer ist das Motiv gleichgültig. Es ist eine schreckliche Tat. Äh, für äh, Konsequenzen anderer Art ist die Motivation natürlich trotzdem wichtig. Rodrigo Duterte, the man dubbed by his rivals as an executioner, has won the presidency in Philippines by a clear margin. Duterte rolled, uh, polled, in fact, nearly twice as many votes as his nearest rivals. His record as the crime-crushing mayor of the southern town of Davao earned him the name The Punisher. That seems to have resonated with voters somehow. Duterte now promises to continue his tough stance as president. Called by turns the punisher, the dictator and even the anti-crime candidate, firebrand mayor Rodrigo Duterte is set to clinch the Philippines presidency. Although the official results have not been declared, the writing is on the wall after withdrawal of Duterte's opponents. With 90% of the presidential ballots counted, Duterte had close to 39%. I wanted to congratulate candidates who have already conceded. I think that is a good tradition in order to um, bring down the political tension. If a candidate believes that he or she the, you know, no longer has the chance to, to win, I think that the proper thing to do is to concede. Earlier, Duterte's closest rival, Mar Roxas, conceded defeat after the polls predicted Duterte's win. The presidential poll saw a record turnout at the polling stations with over 81% of the 54 million registered voters casting their ballot. Senators and about 18,000 local officials including mayors are also being elected. While being the vice mayor and the mayor of southern city of Davao, President-to-be Duterte has the reputation of being a strict disciplinarian. However, human rights groups pointed out that as the Wao mayor, he is accused of allowing death squads to murder hundreds of alleged criminals. Tingnan po natin kasi hindi pa man natin nalalaman kung ano kung kung magaling magdala si Dikong at marami naman po siyang mga sinasabi na kaya niyang ipaunlad ang Pilipinas. Hindi <laughs> na po. <laughs> Matanda na po ako, 60 na po ako, sir. Sana po 
ko sa sumusunod pang kabataan. Sana ayusin niya yung Pilipinas. Ah, siyempre, yung mga ganyang idag natin, meron pa mga ibang sibol. Sana po, sir. It will be interesting how Duterte's crime-busting, tough-talking and action-oriented ways could bring about a change in the political scenario in Philippines. Duterte has promised to weed out corruption and a change from a centralized system to a federal parliamentary form of government. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. And now let's get you some more international news updates in Global Buzz. Former Pakistani Prime Minister Yusuf Raza Gilani's kidnapped son was recovered from Afghanistan on Tuesday in a joint operation by the U.S. and Afghan forces. Ali Haider Gilani was recovered from Ghazni province. He was kidnapped by gunmen in Multan three years back on the 9th of May 2013. The impeachment process against Brazil's President Dilma Rousseff is back on track. In a surprise move, the acting Speaker of the Lower House revoked his decision to suspend a crucial vote. The Senate will vote on Wednesday on the impeachment trial and if Rousseff loses, she will be suspended for the trial's duration. Thousands of North Koreans held a rally marking the end of the first Workers' Party Congress in the last 36 years. Kim Jong-un is elevated to the role of party chairman and his sister Kim Yo-jong has been elected to the ruling committee during the Congress. Alberta Provincial Premier Rachel Notley says that 90% of buildings in the evacuated Canadian city of Fort McMurray have survived the massive wildfire. The hospital and most schools are intact, but 2,400 out of 25,000 structures have been burnt. The attempts to contain the wildfires reaching a turning point on Monday uh, because of the drizzle and favourable wind. Iran successfully test-fired a medium-range ballistic missile capable of striking US forces in the region as well as Israel. It is the third such test since the nuclear agreement with Western nations took effect in January. And now let's get to some cricket news and BCCI President Shashank Manohar resigned from his post amid reports that he may become the first independent chairman of the International Cricket Council. The move comes after the ICC's executive board passed a rule that its chairman should be of independent nature and cannot act in dual role keeping his position as a country's cricketing chief. Manohar is BCCI's nominated chairman in the ICC. He had taken over as the BCCI president after the demise of Jagmohan Dalmia in October 2015. This was his second stint as the head of the cricketing body. And now let's get you some more action from the world of sports in Sportsbeat. The Indo-Swiss duo Sanya Mirza and Martina Hingis continued to lead the latest women's doubles rankings released yesterday by the WTA. Sanya and Hingis, who have won 13 titles together, including four this year, maintained their joint position with 12,045 points each. But Andy Murray has lost the world number two spot to Roger Federer in the latest ATP rankings. After Murray's defeat to Novak Djokovic in the Madrid Masters final, Federer displaced him from the number two spot. An earthquake made by football fans celebrating a goal has been recorded for the first time in the United Kingdom. A University of Leicester team which installed a seismometer near the King Pass Stadium and said that supporters jumping up and down when Leicester grabbed an 89th minute winner against Norwich City caused a quake with a magnitude of 0.3. And that's all we have for you on the news tonight. Thanks for joining us.